Well, if you've been waiting with bated breath for Matthew Holt's in-depth, in-person coverage of hymns, wait no longer, because he's got it. It's the August 19th episode of Health in 2.00. from hymns and how was it tell us everything well no near as good because you weren't there and there are a lot of other <laughs> people who were true a lot of other people who weren't there as well i had a lot of people cancel the last minute uh, hymns said that there were eighteen thousand people there but i don't think so but no, you know, you know, there was a, there was a decent you know it was a decent turnout saw a lot of people saw some good stuff um saw some great discussions by a couple of patients which were good uh, had a lot of conversations that all seemed to be about digital front door chatbot, you know, AI, or remote process automation, whatever stuff. Even though our friends from Olive weren't there, the bus didn't come, or the bus, the bus didn't, didn't make it. The bus didn't make it. <laughs> went, went but uh, you know, and there were also a lot of empty. I couldn't find Cerner's booth. I couldn't find Meditech's booth. I couldn't find Allscripts booth. Maybe they were there somewhere hiding, but there were also these big empty spaces on the floor that were filled up with tables and chairs and places to sit. And some people just had like done that. So Tiger Connect had their booth, had chairs and had a few big, you know, QR codes blown up that you could call but didn't actually have people there. Uh, Epic was there in person, you know, our new friends of here were there. But, but you know, a bunch of people were there. I, I couldn't tell exactly how many. And there was, you know, big, even if it's only 18,000 people, 500 exhibitors, it's still way too much to cover in one day. And you're still walking between, you know, <laughs> the sands and the caesar's expo and i won't tell you the story but please some, don't some people got lost and you know but there was some fun stuff i saw some great people and enjoyed myself you know and i did not catch covid that's but great according Good. to the test i took i mean you know to be fair hymns was like really strict you had to have the clear pass as they wouldn't let you in our friend omar shaker from egypt <laughs> was less than 10 days post vaccination and we come to the us they wouldn't even let him come and do his talk yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, the casinos were strict on everyone being masked in the casinos, but they weren't obviously strict on people. They weren't vaccine testing people on the way and all. Didn't have the vaccination to go, go to the casino. That is the next step, I think, vaccinations for all public spaces. And I also saw some pretty scary data about, from our friends at Humetrics about um, COVID uh, breakthrough infections uh, from the Delta variant. The infections don't need hospitalization and death, but much more prevalent in their data than we've been led to believe. So we are not out of this by any means. Meanwhile, I saw almost no news regarding sort of investments and takeover, you know, that kind of stuff. Very little news for hymns. But we've got some because we've got a couple of weeks yeah. to catch up on here. Well, yeah, lots going on. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, the big one, Maven, 110 million Series D. This kicks them over a billion dollar valuation. Dragoneer and Lux Capital co-led this round. Matthew, talk to me about Maven. Yeah. Well, most important thing about Maven is they have celebrity investors. Um, Oprah is one. And uh, Reese Witherspoon, Reese Natalie Witherspoon. Portman. You and I have got that much fire. fire You've got right. a tiny bit. <laughs> for our next gen VC, which is one of the syndicates I'm in. We dragged in together. But anyway about that but uh and kate Wright, the ceo has also done a really good job of you know maintaining control of the thing expanding this out so it's primary care based around women uh really interesting job and she's obviously growing it fast enough and this is great kudos to her and her team there she will be at policies techies and vcs what's next for healthcare? Coming up. As well as Catherine Ryder on the same panel. Who knew that was going to happen? Amazing. All right. <laughs> what about Carrot Fertility? They raised 75 million in a series C. This brings their total up to 115. This is a tiger uh, that led that round. Uh, yeah. Well, related somewhat to Maven, there's a lot of interest in fertility in, in, in part of femtech. You remember Modern Fertility got bought by Roe uh, mm -hmm. a little while ago. So, yeah, but this is this is an area. And Progeny is, you know, public and doing, doing okay. So, All right. Cricket Health, how about them? 85 million, brings their total up to 111 million. This is a kidney disease company. They were really hot about a year ago. What have they been up to? Uh, well, I think they've been growing. This is uh, Armin Rajan, my old roommate, Bizarre, excellent team, started this. And this is around 
managing people slow to get them into end stage renal disease care more slowly and more appropriately. A bunch of companies in this space, and uh, I saw some Davida folks who were not involved in this, but they say, but were interested in this whole area. This is going to keep growing because there's so much money spent there. All right, ShareCare acquires CareLink, 65 million. Part of that is in cash, 54 of it, and then 10 and some changes in stock. What does this one do? Well, well this is, you know, that one didn't quite get through our list today. Well, but, somebody uh, is talking in slow motion over there. <laughs> but ShareCare, oh right, Pick it Jeff, up. Jeff, <laughs> talking about celebrities, right? Jeff, Jeff, uh, Jeff Arnold with uh, Dr. Oz and a few others. I think Oprah's in that one as well, actually. Um, yeah. ShareCare oh, went public in a great day. Yeah. Went public via a SPAC. Uh, stock has dropped off a bit. You know, it was went public at like nine or ten and went down at down in the sixes. But still, a decent market cap. It is trying to be the complete front door plus disease manager plus everything else that a health plan or hospital or employer could want to buy. And this is a they've added a sort of an on-demand home healthcare platform. So you can add. So they're basically adding everything you could think of and trying to make it sort of a big conglomerate. Um, they haven't got set the valuation of some individual point solutions we've got yet. So we'll have to see if, if that changes. But I think over time, I mean, they're a, you know, don't forget, they, they bought um, they bought a whole, what, More than 13. Before. They, before they even went public, they had more than a dozen companies that I they had acquired over the years. More than that, inclu including, you know, some of the old business management companies. So they're, they're trying to do a sort of one-stop shop for everything for health plans. They got their investment, don't forget, from uh, Anthem. So we'll see how that goes, but my sense is that they're going to be around for the long haul, and this is just another piece of their book. So, I'm already tired of the digital front door. Can I just tell you that is like on my list of buzz phrases that I just hate. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I mean, there were people, uh, there were people in, you know. So basically, that I saw a couple of really interesting things at him. So one of them was a, uh, a a company called Notable, which used to be when I first met him. Remember John Hallett was pimping them from yes. now, now transparent. They used to be an in the exam room natural language recording, you know, make a yeah. note of the office. That's completely changed. Now they use that technology instead to do kind of uh, process automation. And one of the ones they're doing is trying to get people to do to book scheduling via that sort of, yeah. you know, I could you do it on a Friday, can you do it on a Monday? Um, and I saw a couple of other interesting companies who were, who were doing sort of voice based tech like the, the google thing when you call a restaurant um and you call you call a restaurant and the, the machine calls the restaurant to find out if the restaurant's busy or not similar sort of thing exactly. calling calling a similar couple of settings calling call centers uh, to see if you can get things like prioritization done so more of that to come i think that this world of using technology to do you know what you might call digital front door but to do basic tasks like scheduling and and, and setting and figuring out uh, all the stuff that should happen through APIs, but it's instead going to be done by automating the forms and automating the voice calls. There's going to be a lot more of that because, okay, we are opening up the APIs, but we're really nowhere near building that complete interface that will make it all happen automatically without getting some kind of intermediate technology in the way. And that's really what this robot, you know, process automation stuff, AI clever stuff is. Okay. You don't believe me, do you? No, I believe you. <laughs> I was going to say, you think that healthcare is never going to be, you're going to be, uh, speaking as the guy who just spent 37 minutes on hold with the Venetian to fix the bill they screwed up from my visit to Hims, where I had to endure 37 minute commercials of restaurants. Endure <laughs> is a good word for what's happening right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, before I got to a human being who could fix the thing and there was no way I could do it online. We're not the only industry that needs a bit of that help. Yeah. I need my bot to call them and talk it through with them. Anyway. Exactly. Exactly. So what you don't need a bot to do is to go and register for policies, techies, and VCs. What's next? Healthcare. What's next? Yeah. Digital front door. Who's holding the keys? That's a session. What else is a session? What's your favorite session in this oh, one? Oh, I think. I like my Judy Fa Who's drinking Judy Faulkner's milkshake? Who's rebuilding the IT infrastructure panel? That's one of my faves. Just yeah, there's, 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 <laughs> there's so many. Go to uh, one next. So many good ones. Healthcare.com. Check, Check it out. out. Reg, do um, it. You can and still, then, uh, you, can still uh, you can still buy an exhibit booth as well. 
which is actually oh. cheap, almost cheaper than regging. So you should, you know, if you're exploring. Yeah, it comes with regs too. So comes if you're looking with, comes with lots of <laughs> to our star-studded lineup who will be watching also, and to our pool of our attendees, you should definitely check that out. And then while you're on the internet, why not go to thehealthcareblog.com, sign up for our email newsletter, or go to Twitter and follow me at Jess Tomasa or Mr. Holt over there at Holty Boy. We'll talk to you guys soon. We have so many more funny meals to cover. So we'll be back quick. We should do more of these shows.